why OU? What, what, what intrigued you about this job and kind of take us through that process? You know, during my high school days, you know, coaching high school football in Dallas, uh, 01 to 2011, you know, we patterned our staff after o Oklahoma. Everything we did, it was cut and paste straight from o Oklahoma. Mindset, the grit, the style, the physicality, the intimidation, all of that, that came from the University of Oklahoma. And I always said to myself, if I ever get the chance to work with these guys, that's a no-brainer for me. I don't care what other option I have, what other, what any kind of current situation I have, that's, that's a no-brainer for me. You know, so it, it was destined. And uh, it was just unbelievable. Like I was telling the recruit last night, you know, I, I got a couple of pictures in my phone, me and my family and my kids, which is in college now. But she was probably like in the fourth or fifth grade at the time. We had the Texas OU game. We sitting on Oklahoma side, and my high school receivers was playing for Texas, but I won't sit on Oklahoma side in my room, and you can see in my face while I'm just locked in to everything that Coach Stoops and Coach Venomous and those guys were doing down there. So that was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's been a state that this program's recruited heavily over the years. What do you feel like you can bring to the table, and how can you be an asset in that regard? Well, I can just continue to, to, to create that, to, to, to build that bridge from Oklahoma to the state of Texas, not only Dallas, but the state of Texas. Uh, 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 you, OU always had presence in the state of Texas. I just felt like uh, with me having success I had in Dallas, Dallas Independent School District, uh, getting a chance to work here at Oklahoma, it's like a no-brainer. You know, that, that just got more guys from those areas that's very, even more intrigued with being a part of Oklahoma's program. Uh, just him coming to Skyline, him and Coach Stoops coming to Skyline. I can remember being in the office with him and Coach Samples multiple times uh, watching film, and I'm sitting back and just watching his every step. Um, but the same type of grit, the same type of attitude he have, I have that too. Uh, and that's what attracted me to him. You know, but the person he is too, you know, just him just being genuine, being honest, being a true guy, not faking about anything, that that caught my attention a lot. You know, you do your research with guys, he done coached in the past, and a lot of guys, a lot of players he coached, say nothing but good things about him. Real love. How much with, with Coach Levy being at Baylor, was there a relationship that formed there with him? Man, it was a huge relationship. You know, I remember those guys coming over to South Oak Hill, spending tons of amount of time in my office. Honest to God, truth. And it was something about uh, the game back in Lubbock when uh, we got in pregame. I remember being at the 50-yard line with the punt returners, and I was bagging up, and I accidentally bumped into Coach Levy. And it was something about that bump right there. You know, it was something about that bump. And, uh, and I got that phone call from him a couple of days later, and here we are now. But, you know, but uh, he's one of the, probably one of the best offensive coordinators, in, you know, in the country. You know, and it's a different offense for me, and I want to continue to grow and the opportunity to work for him, shoots and with him, like I say, no-brainer. What, kind of, what do you think about your group that's coming in? I love my classroom. I love my classroom. Uh, I got all types of skill set there. And, and good thing about it, we kind of young, too. Young, but um, eager to learn, eager to gain experience. You know, we got length. We got uh, we got, uh, uh, got uh, true slots, uh, smaller type bodies, guys that has grit. I still got my man Drake Stoops with me. It's another coach in the room. Does everything right, practices tail off. And I was telling the room the other day, uh, even when I was at KU, even when I, when I was at Texas Tech watching film on University of Oklahoma, I used to always ask my room, like, why is this guy on the field for the University of Oklahoma with the type of receivers they have in the room? But being around him, I see why now. He's a true student. He give you everything he got, and he'll fight for you. And I told the coaches I would walk down any dark alley in South Dallas with him, any dark alley. That would be one of the first guys I'd grab to walk down that dark alley with. Love him. Love my room. I'm just, I'm still amazed, man. You know, when I exit the highway, exit Lindsay, I'm still amazed. I remember being on that bus my first year with Cliff Kingsbury. We came to Norman to play, and I remember we took that exit to come down Lindsay, drive to the stadium. And I remember saying to myself, oh, boy, I feel like we made the wrong turn. We done, this not the right turn to make. And, I still, and, and, and when I come down that road, you can ask my wife, I still get chills. Uh, just driving past those houses, it brings back all types of memories. I done been on all sides of it. Uh, Oklahoma came in my office and recruited players, coached against Oklahoma for the last nine years, and now I'm playing with them and help them, helping those guys bring, bring banners uh, and bring in elite-level recruits also, too. So, 
Shooks, man, I'm still like on cloud 99, to be honest with you, you know, so it's every bit of what everybody think about OU, you know, and that's one thing I tell a lot of recruits and parents back in Texas is it's a, every bit what you think from the outside in is only going to get better also, too. You talked about that on the Texas game. Who was the receiver that you were there? Mike Mark. Davis. Okay. Mike Davis. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the adjustment to Coach Levy's offense. What was that kind of been like with you getting up to speed there? And Ball is ball. You know, everybody have different terminology. You know, things we call certain things, he may call it something totally different. What we call this, they may call it that same term may mean something else here. So that's pretty much about it. Good ball is good ball. You know, uh, that don't change at all. Uh, but his thought process, man, I see why he used to say score from far. I see why he liked to have true speed. I see why he liked to bring in the best that play in this system. Um, because the way he has to build up, man, at any moment, this, this offense will score from anywhere on the football field. And I'm just going to help him bring in nothing but firepower to put points on the board. Chew and Farouk has that kind of speed you're talking about. That you yes, yes about. sir. Your thoughts on him? Yes, sir. Uh, tough skin player, man. Uh, probably one of the best guys I've been around. It kind of reminds me of uh, as, as Grant, that's Kiki QT, Andrew Parchman. It's that unique skill set. And, and he wants to be coach. Uh, he wants to be developed. He wants to be challenged. And I I try to challenge those guys every day in the classroom, on the football field. And at the same time, man, I always tell them at the end of the day, do not let Coach Jones get in your head. I'm your number one fan. But my job is to see who I can go to war with every day. So I'm going to try to bring it to you as much as possible out here on this practice field. Just absorb it and let it go right out the other ear. You know, it's not, it's not how I say it, but just listen to what I'm saying, though. You know, at the end of the day, we're all family, big fraternity. Talk about Jill and Dre, but the young room, being able to step in, how unique Shoot, is that man. to be able to kind of mold those guys? Boy, you talking start. about J.J. Hester, you talking about Nick Anderson, man. You talking about uh, Jaden Gibson, man, those guys. And I got D.J. with me. I recruited D.J. out of high school as a wide out. That joker probably has some of the strongest hands I've ever seen, man, it's suction cups. Uh, so we're trying our best to work them in at multiple spots. And one thing we're doing in the room is uh, we're trying, we learning the entire concept, man, to get guys used to moving around, playing all over the spot, all over the football field. And they've been absorbing it. I got guys in that room helping me with that as far as uh, increasing the, the pace of the learning level uh, here in this offense because we still got to go back and fix a lot of stuff from last year also too. While I'm coming in learning a new offense, we still got to fix a lot of stuff uh, from last year. So spring ball, I like to start all, all, all the way over with the development with the wide house. So I'm starting over with the development with the wide house and at the same time learning a new system also too. But I'm breaking them all the way down um, just like in that curriculum. We're in chapter one right now. So I don't know how long we'll be in chapter one, but they got to show progression before we move on to chapter two. DJ's made some of the best catches as a DB. Yeah. Does he act and look like a receiver to you? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Uh, just trying to get back, adjust to playing a position. Uh, and, and, and he... Is more difficult than we think? Nope. Not at all. It, it, the mentality, the mindset, the thought process. My job is to simplify everything that we're doing and make it so easy for these guys. I don't want them to think because once they start thinking, then they minimize their skill set. These guys are blessed with some ability. I got some guys in my room, man, and once it's all said and done, you can we can line up against anybody. Let's go. You know, don't matter to me. Uh, but we can't, we can't lose any day right now doing spring ball. We're just trying to show progress, man. It's progress over perfection and just 1% better every day. You know, that's what I talked about those guys about. Coach, talk a little bit about that. What you tech game back in 2016? What you remember about it being on the other sideline? What a testament that is to Oklahoma's tradition. I just remember every time we go down the field and strike, I just told those guys tons of times, it don't matter. Just go ahead and gas up. They probably end up they might score in two plays. We got to go back down and score again. It was just a fun time, fun game to be a part of. Uh, watching Pat, watching Baker go to work. Wide outs making plays all over the field on both sides. You know, OU sideline and our sideline. So that's a priceless memory for, memory for me there.